Welcome back from Easter break. Today, <clears throat> we continue with our study of Luther's large catechism through the Word. Luther makes an initial statement uh, that in the Lord's Supper, God provides us with a daily pasture. And you can certainly see uh, one of the religious practices of the early Lutheran church mirroring the Catholic church that they came out of. They had daily uh, worship services and uh, daily celebrated the Lord's Supper. Uh, a lot different custom for us here in America. Uh, most churches at least once a month, sometimes twice a month. I think ours is maybe one of the more exceptional ones in that we've got it since Monday night is a worship service. We have it every Monday night, but the frequency is different. And yet, the idea is the same. Luther says that, that when the devil sees that our strength is being, our, our faith is being strengthened through the word, he, and that his power over us is becoming weaker, he fights all the more, and he will be relentless until he makes us yield in despair and give up our faith, or Luther says, uh, resort to impatience and, and grumbling. And, and here too, the Lord's Supper is a tremendous source of power and strength to allow us to stand up against the constant attacks of the devil, and they will be constant uh, for, for Christians. But then uh, Luther goes on to address the critics of the Lord's Supper. They say, well, well how can you get forgiveness of sins uh, through bread and wine? And there's a lot of things wrong with that statement, and he'll take both of them apart. But first of all, he goes, you totally overlook the true treasure in the Lord's Supper. You, you don't look at the Word, the Word of Christ, which is involved in a take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you for the words of institution. Because only through the Word do we receive and understand the blessings that God gives us. He doesn't give them in a vacuum. He doesn't have them fall from the sky. But here's the big idea for today. The big idea is that through the word of the sacrament, we have that forgiveness of sins, life and salvation. Uh, through that word, it's not just bread, it's not just wine, it's Christ's true body and Christ's true blood, okay? And, and once again, the devil will do anything he can to turn attention away from the Word, because through that Word, the Holy Spirit is going to create and sustain the faith in his people. Um, it's the only way we can comprehend what God is talking to us about. I mean, how can you get an idea across? Oh, yeah, we've got games charades or something like that. Well, what a pain if our eternal salvation was dependent upon a game of charades by God. No, he speaks to us clearly, intelligibly, simply through the word, even in the sacrament. And then their next objection would be, um, well, how can giving this, this body and blood, this bread and wine, give us forgiveness of sins. That, that happened long ago. And once again, there they're overlooking the word, that through that word, we have that connection with Jesus' suffering and death on the cross. Through his word, like in baptism, we're joined to him in his resurrection to a new life. Um, and, and Luther says, really, these words of the sacrament comprehend the entire teaching of the Holy Christian Church. It is the gospel that is coming to us. And if you're going to say that these words in the Lord's Supper are meaningless or don't convey any power whatsoever, you're basically condemning the whole gospel to an unintelligible mass of sounds that signifies nothing. Um, good luck with the uh, um, material. Uh, respond to the question. Uh, see what your colleagues are answering and, and respond to one of theirs too. God bless your study.